Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha Hawaii, I'm Wendy Lowe and I'm your new friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. If my voice sounds a little weird, it's just because I got back from Kona where we happen to be doing the Relay for Life. At the Relay for Life, what we do there is we celebrate the survivors as they take their health back. Today, our topic of discussion will be on the top brain health tips for all ages. And what I would like to take, what I would like you to take away from today's discussion shall be to enjoy a smarter, healthier, happier brain. Today, we are very honored to welcome Dr. William Sears, who is a national pediatrician of choice. He is a father of eight an author of 45 books on family health and a dear, dear friend from, a dear, dear friend who just loves Hawaii. He comes often to visit us. Aloha, Dr. Sears. Aloha, Lindsay. And you know, I, I associate Hawaii with fun. So mm -hmm. let's do the fun version of brain health tonight. Very good. So I'm excited just to talk to you about the top brain health tips for all ages, Dr. Sears. That's so exciting because you're a pediatrician but yet you can cover all the different ages, and that's what excites me the most. And um, I, I, just, I just am honored just to be here with you to just discuss all these things with you, Dr. Sears. You know, I know the brain is a very complicated piece in our body, so complicated, but could you give me a brief overview of what you're going to be talking to us about today? Yes, well, we pediatricians are very used to making complicated and challenging things simple. So here's a simple book for the brain. Think of your brain as the greatest garden ever grown. Now, what do you need to grow a garden? You need to feed and fertilize it. Mm -hmm. You need to irrigate it, and you need to keep the pests out. Mm -hmm. So the three things that grow the garden are the more you move, because movement makes blood vessels to the brain, which we'll, sh we'll see later, you need to feed it smart foods, and we're going to go through what the smart foods are, and you need to keep toxic thoughts out. And you'll notice from the diagram that that diagram is one simple plant. Now, in the brain, we have 90 billion of those little plants, and you notice that little fiber going from one cell to the next is called myelin, and the myelin is full of fat, like insulation on electrical wire. So as we're going to see later, we are all fat heads, and the more fat on that muscle and the more healthy fat to eat, the better that transmission is. So we're going to talk about that brain garden, how you feed it, how you water it, and how you keep the pests out. All righty, Dr. Sears. You know, I know you're not a techie kind of a person or a fan of technology. But can you just share with us a little bit about how technology helps you in your practice and what you're doing every day? Well, uh, one of those is our new book uh, called The Dr. Sears T5 Wellness Plan, where we show that you can keep the five, all the five uh, parts of your brain Three. in one hand. Now, in technology, in answer to your question, what you see is what's called a PET scan. This is a windows into the brain. We can tell what's going on in there. And you'll see where that diagram is. That was a person who had a lot of sad thought. All the Ds, OCD, BPD, just a sad thinker. And his sad center was the size of a quarter. Eight weeks after what we call think changing the brain, it used to be called cognitive behavioral therapy, thinking happy thoughts and not sad thoughts, the sad center shrank or decreased in size from the size of a quarter to the size of a dime, illustrating by technology that we can change our brain by the way we think. The whole field of technology has opened up windows into the brain. 
Wow, that's exciting, doctor. I mean, uh, I know we need to use technology because it does help us dive into places that we can't see, and um, it just helps us along. And so I'm glad you're you're catching up on that. And I know you had your you have your son there by your side to help you with all the tech you know issues and the the days. So I'm excited that both of you are there actually. You know, Dr. Sears, I like your analogy of the brain as a garden. You know, I love to garden. I'm like one of the lead gardeners of Hawaii right now, I grow vertically, but you are growing old school way, the traditional way. So tell us about this highly intelligent garden, the brain. Oh, the garden. Now, if you look at the diagram, you'll see one of the fibers there. That's just one of 90 billion. And the first thing you do is you fertilize it and you feed it with smart foods. So we're going to talk about smart foods. Then you irrigate it with more blood vessels. The more you move, the more blood vessels you make, and you keep the pests out, which is how you think. So you notice from our diagram that we have three keys to the brain. The more you move, exercise, the happier you think, keeping the weeds out of the brain, and the foods that you fertilize and feed your brain with. And we call it L-E-A-N. The more you learn, the better you eat, the better you move, and the better you think. So grow your brain garden. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, Wendy. Good. And um, Dr. Sears, I know you surround yourself with a lot of other professional professionals that are involved with different aspects of health. But I've got to ask you, who is your favorite brain specialist? Okay, you'll be surprised when I give you. So let's imagine you take a trip. Okay. You, you, you have your, uh, a family full of a lot of, we call it stuff, a lot of brain problems. Mm -hmm. So you go online and you figure out, I'm going to go see the top specialist in the whole world for my brain problems. And you go into her office. And the top brain specialist in the world writes out a prescription, Dr. Mom says. Eat more fruits, veggies, and seafood, and go outside and play. There's no better medicine in the whole wide world, Wendy, than what Dr. Mom said. Eat more veggies, eat more fruit, eat more seafood, and go outside and play. That's my favorite brain specialist was Dr. Mom. <laughs> you know, and um, Dr. Sears, in regards to that, you know, we have nine months of pregnancy. We go in with a bachelor's degree, and then we go through the first nine months, we have a baby, and that's going for pre-med school. And after the first three months, we be, we've got our master's, and then we're going for our PhD as they get older and older. And so, yes, that, that allows mothers, not just to have an LE uh, degree, which is a life experience degree, but then it also gives us a MD, right? So actually yeah. like mother, you know, mother of diseases or just a medical degree because we, come, we become professionals and very knowledge, especially with great professionals like you by our side, guiding us each step of the way. So Dr. Sears, the brain is so smart, right? It's a brain. And it, can it make its own medicines? Really? Yeah. So how does the brain do that, Dr. Sears? Well, Wendy, I'm going to take you inside the brain and the blood vessels, and what you're about to hear actually won the Nobel Prize. So what you see there is inside the blood vessel. Now, the bottom blood vessel, you see a whole row of medicine bottles. Mm -hmm. So we have our, our pharmacy is right inside the, 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 the blood vessels. So notice the lining of the blood vessels. There are trillions of little microscopic medicine bottles lining the blood vessel. And when you eat the right foods, like Dr. Mom said, more seafood, more fruits, more veggies, take the right supplements, you keep the sticky stuff off the tops of the medicine bottles so they can open and you can flood your, your blood vessels with all the right medicines. Now notice the person on top. That person's not from Hawaii. That person's, say, from the mainland? Okay. <laughs> we'll call him Sam the Sitter. So Sam sits all day and puts sticky stuff in his mouth. You know, the junk food, sticky stuff, we call them, for the kids. And you notice Sam's medicine bottles are closed. 
the sticky stuff is on top of the medicine bottle. Now, even worse, Sam sits too much. And that's what won the Nobel Prize. When you move, you notice the bottom slide, the, the one from Hawaii. When you move, the blood flows faster over the tops of the medicine bottles. And the medicine bottles open and flood your, your blood vessels and flood your brain garden with a lots of smart medicines. So that's why Dr. Mom said, go outside and play. So the more we move, the more brain medicines we make. That's something I want you all to remember. The more you move, the more you open your internal pharmacy, your medicine bottles, and flood your brain with all these smart medicines. Wow, Dr. Sears, I think that has to be my favorite slide. You know, it makes it so um, easy for me to understand. It just shares with me that if I exercise and I do the right things, I don't eat the sticky stuff, then that means my insides are happy and flowing to the point where the natural pharmacy within my body opens up and starts to do what it's supposed to do, heal my body. Is that correct, Dr. Sears? Yes, that's correct, Wendy. You got it. Well, if you want to have some fun tomorrow, say you're walking with a bunch of friends real fast down on Waikiki Beach, and you say real loud, oh, it feels so good to be making my own brain medicine. I'm opening my pharmacy. I'm making my own medicines. They'll kind of look at you, you know, uh, too many Mai Tais last night. But no, that's what you're doing. When you move fast, you actually open your internal brain pharmacy. Wow, that's very important to understand and to know. And I, I think if more people understood that, you know, a lot of people will walk and do these things because they want to lose weight. But actually, they're opening up their pharmacies of their bodies. And that would help them heal versus not just thinking to lose weight. I need to run. I need to exercise. I need to lose weight. So, Dr. Sears, why is exercise particularly important for brain health? You know, I thought exercise, exercise was important for cardiovascular health for my heart. So I walk, I swim as much as I can because I'm worried about my heart. But now you're saying it's actually even great for my brain? Well, it's, it's even better for your brain. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the brain uses more blood than any other organ per, per gram of weight, than any other organ in the body. So the more you irrigate your brain with more blood vessels, the smarter your brain becomes the happier your brain becomes. So that's why movement makes more blood flow to your brain garden. That's an easy way to remember. I'm going to move more to make more blood flow to my growing brain garden. And the, the, the medicines that the brain garden actually makes, when you move, you make happy medicines, medicines that bring your moods up, mood elevators, medicines that lower the highs, like antidepressants, uh, high blood pressure, medicines that elevate the loads, antidepressants, medicines that, that um, keep you from hurting so much, anti-inflammatories. So all those antis that you pop a pill for, you can actually make them. But the medicines you make, Wendy, the medicines you make are safer than the medicines you take because they're custom made just for your brain they come out at the right time, in the right dose, no side, no side effects at all, and your insurance company will love you because they're free. Wow, Dr. Sears, that's a lot of great information. And I'm going to have to take a break right now. It's a 60-second break that we will be taking, and we'll come back with you live for more exciting information about a happier, healthy brain. So, Dr. Sears, hold on for 60 seconds, and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel, one of the hosts of Asia in Review, which is broadcast Monday afternoons on thinktechhawaii.com. We cover, we study news and politics in and affecting Asia. We work hard to bring you the most interesting subjects and guests who will raise your awareness. Please join us Mondays every week on Asia in Review on thinktechhawaii.com and also on YouTube and iTunes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Aloha, she she, and saijian. When it comes to managing your pain, you have a choice. Don't mask your pain with opioids. Choose to treat it with the help of a physical therapist. Physical therapists treat pain through movement and exercise. No warning labels required. 
and you get to actively participate in your care. Choose to improve your health without the risks of opioids. Choose physical therapy. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii with Wendy Lowe and Take Your Healthy Back. And we're here with Dr. William Sears, a pediatrician, father of eight, and author of 45 books. So Dr. Sears, we went through a lot of great information. The, my favorite bit of info was that the more I exercise, the better my health would be internally because exercise promotes a pharmacy within my body to open up and start healing internally. Is that correct? That's correct, Wendy. That's correct. Very good. And you know, let me just uh, direct our topic now to what you are trained for. You're a pediatrician. And so I want to know about babies and about babies' mm. brains and their health. So what about feeding babies' brains? Yes. Well, imagine, Wendy, you're bringing your baby into my office mm -hmm. for the six-month checkup. Mm -hmm. And we have what I call growing a little fathead talk. <laughs> Remember, our brain is mostly fat. So the ways I get moms to remember is you are growing a little fat head. So what do little fat heads need? They need smart fat. So gone are the days of using rice cereal as the first food because there's no fat in it. So the first food is avocados. Avocados are healthy fat. And the second food is wild salmon. So avocados and salmon are the starter foods we use for the brain because the brain needs smart fat. Now also, what is different about fat? You ever left a piece of uh, fresh fish out overnight and smelled it in the morning? It turns rancid. That's called oxidation, turning rancid. So the brain, especially the brain of growing little fat heads, it needs more antioxidants. And what are those antioxidants? more veggies and fruits. So we have what we call the sprinkle talk at seven months in my office, where I, I say now, uh, I know your, your child probably has trouble with veggies, so I'm going, I open what I call my little veggie, which is a capsule full of veggies. And I open it and I sprinkle the veggies, we call it sprinkles, I sprinkle the veggies on mom's hand, and then I have the baby lick the veggies Mm, and develop a taste for veggies. And I have her do that every day. And so the baby develops a taste for veggies. So you got seafood, avocados, veggies. You're starting that baby off with what we call a smart food start. Wow. So, Dr. Sears, that, again, is another great tip because we know the brain is predominantly made, it's fat. And so you need to feed it fats, which are avocados, coconuts, and then as you get a little bit older, omegas or fats from fish, which is like salmon. And, you know, we had no idea about that. I mean, locally growing up here in Hawaii, I've eaten a lot of coconuts as I was growing up, but we didn't, I didn't eat a lot of avocado and salmon. So now that I know that when I start having grandchildren, that's exactly what I'm going to be feeding them. Avocados and mashed coconut up. Coconut is a wonderful, healthy. Coconut oil is a great food for the brain. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent, excellent. All right, so Dr. Sears, every time you're in Hawaii, I look for you everywhere in the mall. I look for you in the, at the offices, but I can't find you. You're always on the beach, walking, walking, walking on the beach. What are you doing out there, and why is exercise and being outdoors so important for you? Well, Wendy, from head to toe, as you see here, exercise is so good, good for us. It's good for the brain. It builds happy hormones. It uplifts us. It uh, dials down negative thoughts. It's good for the heart. It's good for the joints. It's good for the gut. It's good for every organ in the body. So just as Dr. Mom said, go outside and play. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a whole new science that's called the neuroscience of nature. Another word for it, forest bathing, which simply means go outside. The healing effects of nature. I look up and I see I, E-Y-E, -E, I feel good because the I is part of the brain. And we see that beautiful beach in Hawaii, the beautiful sand, the palm trees waving in the air. All of those send messages to the happy center of the brain, I feel good 
when I'm outside. Wow, and there is a slide that goes along with that to show us exactly what you're talking about for the outdoors and just the healing effects of being outdoors. So um, we really wanted to share that with everyone. So there we go, the healing effects of nature. And so that's exactly what Dr. Sears just went over. It just gives all the different um, elements of your body, just all the different sensations, and it's just shown to you all right there. So Dr. Sears, now that we're gonna move forward onto diet, and what are your favorite S or your favorite smart foods? Smart foods, mm -hmm. you have it in the palm of, in palm of your hand. Right. First of all, we have salads with spices, antioxidants again, uh -huh. my favorite spices, turmeric, and then we have Snacking, right? Many meals, a brain like the study supply all day long. Then we have supplements based on science, science based supplements. Seafood, my favorite is wild salmon. And then we have smoothies. A shake a day helps keep the brain doctor away. So, in a nutshell, Wendy, that, those are my five favorite foods. I'm going to throw in another one too eggs. Eggs are excellent for the brain. Right. You know, so Dr. Sears, I go all over the place with my apple because this says, <laughs> if I keep eating this, that means I'm going to keep you away. But I want you to stay as close to me as possible as I eat my apple because I'm learning so much from you, Dr. Sears. And I just think this is so valuable because we all know this, this contains over 10,000 nutrients, mm -hmm. vitamin nutrients that our body needs. And so this mm -hmm. is part of your, four, uh, your five smart foods, right, Dr. Sears? Yeah, absolutely, Wendy, because the five smart foods have two nutrients in common. Smart fat, because we have old fat head, <laughs> and antioxidants to keep the brain from wearing and tearing. So antioxidants, fruits, veggies, and smart fats, which are seafood. That, that was simple. And so now we go, we grow up a little bit from the keiki, we go to the school children. So why is it so important that the school children eat smart foods? Well, there's a, there's a little picture right there uh, of a seven-year-old called Oliver. Oliver had one of these Ds, you know, ADD and ADHD. He was so fidgety. He couldn't write. There is Oliver, his handwriting before and after the smart food diet, which is mainly the omegas. So, so Oliver was put on high doses of omegas and look at his, his handwriting. One month later, he was like a new child. So that, that was just one simple study, Wendy. There are 20,000 studies on this, but one simple study showed that you can change a child's brain by simply feeding them smarter foods. Oh, that's like magic, right? And you know, that's, yeah. that's where we come down to the apple again, you know, just eating the, the right mm -hmm. choice, which is the apple versus the sticky food. And so that's why we yeah. want to encourage more moms to take it out of the icebox, cut it up and eat it because you got it in your icebox, but you gotta cut it and then you gotta eat it. Yeah. So this is actually truly fast food. Exactly, if you, if you and, think about and, you know, it. And, and, and to summarize the foods, mm -hmm. I make it very simple. Yes. You know, go fish, go green, go blue, blueberries, mm -hmm. and go nuts. <laughs> you got seafood, greens, nuts, and blueberries. And we have a very slide simple. also to show everyone those simple steps. There we go. Mm -hmm. All righty. So now we come to a little bit more seriousness. Most of us don't realize that we have two brains. One is here in our brain, in, in our head, I should say, and the second brain that we have is in our gut. Can you share with us a little bit about our gut brain? Yes, the, the gut is called the second brain, and here's what happens. The head brain sends biochemical text messages through the highway of the body called the vagus nerve down to the gut brain. And so the head brain and the gut brain are constantly sending these biochemical message, mes, uh, messages, texting each other, hey, how are you doing down there? So the gut brain says, hey, head brain, don't eat dumb foods, eat smart foods. And then the gut brain says, if you eat smart foods, then I will feel good in my gut. So that's why the head brain and the gut brain are so important to eat the smart foods we talked about because when your head brain feels good, 
your gut brain feels good. And that's called the microbiome, which is the, the gut bugs that line your intestines. And the better you feed them, the better they work for you. And those foods that we mentioned, uh, eat more fruits, veggies, and seafood, that's what the gut bugs like. Wow. So, Dr. Shears, you know, our time is going by so quickly. We have about a minute left. But before we stop, I want to know, on a personal note, what do you do for a stress buster relief? What do you do, uh, Dr. Sears? And in Hawaii, what do you have so much of? Water. So I'm going to demonstrate it that every morning I do my flotation therapy. I get in the swimming pool or the ocean, and I'm going to demonstrate it now. You develop a mantra, attitude of gratitude. Thank you, God, for my life, 78 years. Thank you for my wife, 52 years. Thank you for my health, cancer survivor. Thank you for my wealth, eight kids. Thank you for my MD. Please make it my ministry. And it was called flotation therapy. Do use a mantra, get in the pool, and synchronize your mantra with a swimming stroke. It is, I think, Wendy, the best stress buster and a wonderful way to start the day. Well, Dr. Sears, you know, um, I've learned a lot from you today, and I, I feel so good because I practice a lot of what you're already sharing with us. I, too, surf a lot. As soon as I get off of air, an airplane coming back to Honolulu, the first thing is I go home, unpack, grab my board, and I'm in the beach. And I am doing exactly that. I'm d dipping my body into the water and just cleansing and refreshing and sharing all my gratifications out and receiving them back in. So, Dr. Sears, hearing it from the doctor, it makes much more sense and because people are going to follow you and listen to you. So I'm so just, I'm so grateful that we had this time with you. And uh, we would like to welcome you back at any time when you have some time to share your heart and your, your knowledge and life with us. So coming live to everyone from Think Tech Hawaii in the plaza building here in Honolulu, we just want to say mahalo, Dr. Sears, for another great 30 minutes of knowledge and life experiences. Mahalo, Wendy. Mahalo, Dr. Sears. Aloha and aloha to everyone.